really what it amounts to is feeling your way along rather than thinking your way along. What it really is about, it's about understanding that the creative process is ask, which is the first step, which contrast helps you to do, but ask and launching the rocket that's the first step, but your inner being then getting hold of the rocket and focused, that's step two. You ask and it is given. Step one, step two. But then step three is you stop observing, which holds you in the asking. You can't ask and allow at the same time. So this whole conversation today is an in-depth master course in understanding the difference between step one, step two, step three, which you've been talking about for a long long time but you haven't been feeling your way there because you are step oneers <laughs> and step one's a good thing just don't stay stuck in step one because step one is where your questions come from it's where your asking comes from it's also where your defensiveness comes from your comparison comes from your justification comes from your needing to explain yourself into oblivion comes from you're wanting to be understood you're wanting to shake people I've given you 10 million words and you still don't get me well that's because it doesn't happen that way it's where you're aware of wholeness aware of connection aware of blending aware of vortex aware of the reason for the vortex in other words awareness of how it works and what it's about that will put you in a vibrational frequency where what matches your vibrational frequency will come to you and really friends that's the only thing you want to get you isn't it you get what we're getting at let's not get so far out into the airy fairy that you can't connect with it on a day-to-day -day basis so what does it come back to i live in a physical world and i'm a physical creator but i'm doing it all with energy which is different than the way i thought it was i thought it was with action and words and hammers and nails and it's not it's about deciding and pointing and feeling what that's like and then letting the laws of the universe gather up the cooperative components that will turn all of those thoughts to things and I will know it when I see it and that's hard for our humans we love you so much it's hard for you to let go of the way you've been justifying your existence do you know what you're most mad about if you're mad and most of you are what you're most mad about is that people don't get how hard you're working <laughs> people just don't understand the price you're paying so it makes whiners out of you it makes explainers out of you you just work so hard to try to describe a deservability that already exists trying to explain why you deserve you say can you feel how if just for a little while just give it a day or two or three you could give up comparing yourself to anybody else and just pretend like Abraham's right <laughs> and that there is an energy showering down around everyone and that everyone gets to receive it and utilize it in whatever way they are choosing and that what most people are mad about is that they are not pointing the energy toward what they really care about because they didn't know that's how it worked most people are pointing most of their attention toward problems and protests and things that they don't want and so there's this feeling within them of unfulfillment that would go away in a moment if you could just stop comparing yourself to anybody else feel the energy raining down and then you just awareness it into what you want somebody said to Esther what do you do and Esther said I'm a pointer they said oh and Esther thought that was easier than I thought it was going to be the pointer they didn't say what do you mean they had no idea they just thought she was a crazy person <laughs> but if they had asked she would have said I just point and I don't explain very much anymore I don't defend at least I'm wanting to do less and less of that I'm a pointer and the cooperative universe says okay where do you want it and when do you want it what do you want and where do you want it and when do you want it 
If you don't know the answers to those things, then just think about why you want it. Why do you want it? I want it because it would be fun. That's a big enough reason. Well, what is it that you want? Well, I'm not clear about that. Then just keep thinking about why. I want to have fun. I want to be clear. I want to feel good. I want to be excited about life. These are the whys. Well, what exactly is it that you want? Well, if you're not clear, then don't try to explain it. Don't just make stuff up. It gets in the way. Just keep talking about why you want it, why you want it. And pretty soon you'll be able to describe more clearly what it is you want. Fun people to play with, great places to go, good food to eat, lovely things to look at, new ideas popping into my mind, an eagerness for life, cooperative components coming to me. Me picking things out of their mind and them picking things out of my mind so much so that we know that without it being both of us, there could not have been that engagement that created that thing before. If you are deliberate about feeling good before you engage, then they can't call anything from you that isn't active. So they always benefit. So it's like being deliberate about your awareness of wonderfulness then they can't get anything less than wonderfulness from you because it just isn't active in the moment. So therefore it doesn't exist for them to pick up on. And you are then only able to evoke what they consider to be the best of them. And that word engagement, what a good word that is. That's co-creating at its best. Deliberate engagement. That's why a gathering like this feels good because mostly on the same wavelength, and reaching for that which is more but you can find it anywhere you look for it co-creating it is very best more 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 so now why and what have become more clear who why do you want it why do you want it what is it that you want engagement engagement with what things that match what i'm offering vibrationally what are you offering vibrationally only things that feel good why because i like to feel good See how it comes back around to being very, very simple. So what do I want? I want to feel good. Why do I want it? I want to feel good. What is it? I want engagement that feels good. Who would I want it with? I don't know. I think the law of attraction should figure that out because the law of attraction, my inner being, everybody knows it's in my vortex. All the details are in there. What I really like, what rings my bells, what makes me laugh, what makes me have fun, what interests me. It is already known. I don't have to explain it. That's observing too much. That's too much in the observing part of it. I'm going to awareness it in. I'm going to sniff it out. I'm going to feel myself. And then all of a sudden in a day or two or today or right away, it doesn't matter how far it might be on the television. It might come into your phone some way, somehow something that will come to you that is engagement that feels so great. And you say, there, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's just what I was talking about. That's it. That's it. Connect those dots. Revel in that. Feel it. Don't try to explain it to people that could care less. Don't try to make people understand your weirdness. You're too far out there. You are way too far out there. They're not going to get you. They're going to worry about you. You're not supposed to know about energy. You're not supposed to be the master of the universe. You're supposed to struggle and point your canoe upstream and, and explain stuff to people. That's what most of them want from you. Be more humble and afraid. Be very afraid. And so before you know it, you've just got your confidence back. You've got your zest for life back. And when you click into that and you have been clicking in there in various degrees all this time that we've been together haven't you and now what's going to happen is just because of this resonance that you've been feeling as we have been engaging together and don't one of you for one minute exclude yourself from the engagement because you are a hundred percent of you engaged you're engaged here this is something that we are co-creating together you're in on this which means you're going to have some obvious dots to connect pretty soon. And when they come, no matter what they are, don't try to explain it to others. Just revel in it and acknowledge the 
cleverness of your awareness scene that then turned some thoughts to things but you made the jump it's like quantum leap only it wasn't a quantum leap because there's no such thing really as a quantum leap because if it doesn't connect it doesn't connect and so you got some stuff there there aren't enough words to quite put it there but interestingly you got it even though there aren't enough words to put it there did you feel that you got it you have a greater awareness we know you do you have to we felt it happen within the room we felt you shift you have a greater awareness of your power right now than you did before and of the perfection of the law of attraction which is inherent in every physics law in every mathematical equation it's inherent in everything everything that is biological everything that is everything that is everything this vibrational matching is what it's all about and so when you really get the notion that you are an extension of source energy who has awareness of you awareness not just awareness of who you were before you came into this body but who you are because you've been in this body and what you've asked for since awareness of that vibrational expansion of you who understands you so completely and isn't at odds with where you are just understands where you are in relationship with what you're becoming oh, talk about ease that's ease that's the ease that you're looking for that realization that I'm okay where I am and it's even logical that I am here and having lived what I've lived has caused this to all happen and now nothing less than that will do that's why you feel impatient but if you think you're gonna make it happen through determination or demands of others that's a hard way to go about it and it produces paltry puny results but when you master your alignment with this energy that creates worlds and you become this worthy feeling pointer that is called by the love that is truly who you are then no matter what the situation is you cannot get it wrong you can't miss it sometimes people worry as they listen to us Abraham you teach selfishness we sure do because you only have the perspective of self Abraham you teach a sort of invincibility shouldn't we be more humble invincibility is who you are you didn't say I'll go and let earth beat me up and then I'll croak and then I'll go do it again and if I get beaten up enough I'll know what to avoid you said I'll go and I'll choose because you knew your power of choice and the thrill of focusing in the thrill of engaging engaging with this source energy you aren't making your way to enlightenment you are enlightenment you're not making your way to worthiness you are worthy you're not proving yourself to someone who is good while you're not you are that goodness you see and the rub is everybody else is too and sometimes humans comparative minds don't want to match that quite up like that awarenessing awarenessing I heard this but I felt it I felt some control on me that I've never felt before and that I don't prefer think of your relationship with your inner being how your inner being is with you your inner being doesn't pity you or make up ground for you or focus with you in the problem your inner being stays solution oriented and wanted oriented and focused toward where you are asking to be and so you learn once you get the hang of this and you want to feel good you figure it out that going with the flow of what feels good is empowerment yeah